Hi everybody, it's Jamie from Plato and Preschool. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I am coming on live today to share with you the coolest insect experiment or activity that we are doing with our preschoolers. Now, if you watch my videos regularly, you're gonna totally laugh that I've decided to do this with my students because you may remember that less than a week ago, we had a full out carpet emergency when some students accidentally knocked a big vase of really dark purple water from our plants unit all over my white carpet. So if you knew that and you're about to hear what I'm doing now, you're gonna say, Jamie, you are completely crazy. What are you thinking having ants in your classroom? Do you not know your students? But I say, let's take that as a learning experience last week with the purple water. And this week, we're gonna be more careful with our hands and not knock over the ant farm. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna give it a try. My students are hook, line, and sinker totally into insects this week. We've introduced one each day to them, and we're gonna introduce these ants next week because I have a different set of students on Thursday and Friday. So today was actually my younger students' very first day with insects. Hi, friends. So, in addition to the crickets and the caterpillars and the mealworms that I showed you last week, we also are going to have an ant farm. Ah, it is the coolest thing. I've got it behind this little white um, board because the light is doing like a weird thing. It's, you know, it's transparent. The plastic is clear on the front and back. So I'm gonna show you the ant farm first so you can see how cool it is. And then we're gonna talk about some of the activities and some of the care um, that we have to do for the ants. If you have any questions about the ant farm, leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them. I've been studying a lot about ants this week. Okay, so here's the ant farm. I'm gonna put this white thing up. Do you see those guys? We have this Geo Safari ant farm. I've taken like a million videos because they're so cool. And we fill this bottom part up with sand and then dump the ants up in here. They come in like a little vial from Amazon in the mail. And they get down, well they don't really go down the ladder, I just dumped them in. They all are lined up in here and then they go down through these holes and just start tunneling. So you can see where they have started to make these tunnels. It's the coolest thing because the little ants are like taking bites of they like take little bites of sand and then they move them up to the top of the ant, like the sand hill. And some of these ants are even getting the bite of ant and they're taking it all the way up through the hole and they're bringing some of the sand up here. It's the coolest thing. These guys are so busy. Gemma and I feel like maybe they work in shifts though because there's this whole bunch of them that sleep along here during the day and then they like tag each other out. But it's, these are the coolest insects. I could stare at them all day long. When I first put them in here yesterday, the sand was a little bit lower. It was all the way to the top when I put the sand in and then I got it a little bit wet and then it, you know, it compressed just a little bit, the sand did. And so it was a far jump from this hole down to where the sand line was. Do you know what those ants did? They, the first one jumped and then they like, the ant like stood up on its legs and like helped the next ant down. And by the time a bunch of the ants had gone down, they had made like this like chain to get the ants down out of the hole so they didn't have to drop down. I'm like, what? I wish my students would work as cooperatively as these crazy ants. I should have put them up like on a block. Oh, that's what I need is like a little. All right, so this is the um, ant farm that I ordered. It's from, maybe I can put them on here. It's a Geo Safari brand ant farm. Let's see if this will work. Can you see them a little bit better? Oh, that makes sense. And it came with everything that we needed to set up the ant farm except for the sand. So we just put in some sand from our sandbox and they came with little vials of ants. They came in this envelope and we opened it up. It was separate from the, from the Geo Safari. And there was like a little vial of ants and it's like, be careful, don't touch the ants. They have to go straight in, don't touch, they'll pinch you or bite or something. Um, but it's completely self-enclosed. you know, self -enclosed. They can't get out according to the directions. Although I'm thinking maybe a little duct tape here on the top just for good measure. <laughs> um, and to feed them, so the water has, the sand has to stay moist with some water. So we just use a little eyedropper and just drop some water in a, you know, a couple drops every day. And then we just feed them crumbs. 
so we can put in like cracker crumbs or little pretzel, little bitty pretzel crumbs. I actually dropped some cracker crumbs in um, after snack today. Can you see that? Ants are amazing. They can carry so, <laughs> they can carry such heavy things. You know, their bodies are so little, I think they can carry like 40 times their body weight. Um, but I love this ant safari. It comes with all of these directions. I'm not sponsored by them, incidentally. I just bought it on Amazon, but I think it's the coolest thing. Um, it came with all these directions and activities, and I think it's the coolest thing. The kids, I'm completely mesmerized by it. My own kids, the ones that live at my house, um, came down yesterday and they were staring at it for hours. Um, it's the coolest thing. Have you ever had an ant farm? Do you guys have any tips for me? It is a good idea with the tape because I do remember my students last week. I've got paint on my fingers. Um, I do remember my students last week with the purple, with the purple water. You're right, I should probably tape it. <laughs> and I was thinking like, oh, they can't really get out when I open it. But they totally can. Those little guys can crawl like all the way up the window. Yeah, and there's a ladder, so you're right. Maybe tape is a good idea. <laughs> we have three books at our ant center here at the science area. So I'm going to show you three that I think are really good for preschool students. And then the last one has this awesome language and conversation activity that sort of leads into it. I'm going to show you with show you and what we're doing with that next week too. So the first book is this one is called National Geographic Kids All About Ants. It has real photographs of ants, which is super cool. And it's a level one reader, so it's perfect for our youngest students. Um, has great diagrams of the parts of his, of his body. Um, and it's just perfect, you know, for four and five year old students and six year old students. Everybody says to tape it. Okay, you're right, I will. <laughs> Note to self, tape the ant farm shut. I did tape the bottom, so the you flip the whole thing over before you put the ants in, and these bottom pieces come off, and that's how you put the, you know, you flip it over and you put the sand in, and then I did have the good sense to tape that shut. Um, but you're right, I should probably tape the top. Let's not take any chances with the ant farm because who needs those loose in the classroom? Incidentally, when we did go, on an insect hunt outside at recess the other day, we found kind of an ant farm near my house. And you know, the kids were like poking at it with sticks, there's like bazillions of ants. And so after they left, I said to my husband, those ants are gonna get in our house, we've gotta go out and put an ant trap or you know something. And um, so I'm like, so, he's, he's teasing me. So what you're telling me is we're gonna kill the ants outside and order ants from Amazon? And I was like, just go with it. <laughs> Don't question me. Um, anyway, this little National Geographic reader is a really good one for our youngest students. <laughs> Men. <laughs> um, another book that I love, but it's a little bit harder, is the stage two reader called Ant Cities by Arthur Doros. And it has some really, I used to teach this book when I taught second grade. I used to read it. It was in our, I think it was in our basil reader, actually. But it has some really nice diagrams of how they tunnel and what the jobs are for each of the different types of ants. The ants that we ordered from Amazon, not the ones outside, do not have a queen. I guess there's some kind of like a law about how you can't ship a queen ant in the mail. I don't know. <laughs> these are just the worker ants. And also you can't let these out, like into your yard or your playground habitat when you're done with them. Um, they just stay in the ant farm for their whole life cycle until they die. <laughs> and then I think you could buy like ant refills or something to go in there. All right, and then my favorite book to read with my preschoolers when we're learning about ants is this one. Are you guys familiar with this book by Philip and Hannah Hoos? It's called Hey Little Ant. Now this book lends itself to some really amazing discussions about kindness, about understanding the world from others' points of view, and it rhymes and it's like a little song. So it is the story of this boy who is walking along on the sidewalk. Well, here he is laying in the grass and the ant is laying in the grass and the boy is walking along on the sidewalk and he sees an ant on the sidewalk and I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you but it's a little song like this hey little ant down in the crack can you see me can you talk back see my shoe can you see that well now it's going to squish you flat and so it's the boy talking to the ant and of course then the ant has to respond so here's the ant from the ant's point of view, looking up. He says, 
Please, oh please, do not squish me. Change your mind and let me be. I'm on my way with a crumb of pie. Please, oh please, don't make me die. And they go back and forth with the boy, like, why should I not, you know, step on you? So here he is, this great big boy. He says, anyone knows that ants can feel. You're so tiny, you don't look real. I'm so big and you're so small. I don't think it'll hurt at all. And it goes back and forth from the kid to the ant about why he should step on the ant or he should not step on the ant. And the ant talks about how he has a family and he's just bringing them food. He's not trying to be a thief. And the very last page leaves this great question for us to pose to our preschoolers. So the ant is the really big one and he says, I can see you're big and strong. Decide for yourself what's right and wrong. If you were me and I were you, what would you want me to do? And then here's the question. Should the ant get squished? Should the ant go free? It's up to the kid, not up to me. We'll leave this kid with the raised up shoe. What do you think that kid should do? Right? Because our kids outside, they love to step on ants. They're always looking for them. And so then the question begs, should you step on an ant if it's not bothering you? Right? And I love to have that discussion and the debate with our kids because some of the kids are going to say, yes, you should always step on an ant. It might bite you. A lot of my kids are like, everything bites, step on it. Right? And then some of the other kids, maybe who are a little bit more mature in their thought, can think like, well, the ant has as much right to live or as much right to be on the sidewalk as you do, right? No, you shouldn't kill the ant. He's not hurting you. And it's a really amazing way to encourage students to think more carefully about living things, even things that are smaller than them, and to kind of debate back and forth the pros and cons of, yes, we should step on the ants, and no, we should not step on the ants. I love to read this the day that I introduced the ant farm because then I can also talk about how these ants are not bothering us. They are in the plastic container not hurting anybody. So we do not pick it up. We do not shake it. We do not open the top of the ant farm. We're just going to look at the ants. They're not bothering us. Let them do their thing, right? <laughs> That's my goal anyway. I also want to show you, I got these giant, they're called jumbo insects from Learning Resources. And we have an ant one, so I'm going to bring it out during circle time so that the kids can touch it and count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, and see the antenna. Look how big this guy is. He's as big as my hand. This is a set of, I don't know if it's seven or eight, jumbo insects. And they're so good for the kids to be able to hold during circle time. You know how I always say start with a real thing, but I also think it's good because you can't really hold an ant, right? To be able to see the head and the thorax and the abdomen, and you can really identify all the parts of the ant by these jumbo, rooms, jumbo ones. So this is everything that I have over at my little ant city center and some of the activities that we're gonna do during circle time to go with it. I hope if you are doing insects or you're considering an insect unit that you will consider getting an ant farm. I think this was $30. It came with a coupon for the ants um, and the books I'm sure are available at the library, but it is such an interesting, it's just interesting to be able to see something that you don't normally see. You know, it's usually underground up close and just to notice how the insects are all working together and the ants are, you know what I mean? They're bringing up the sand, they're, you know, clearing out the tunnels, they're taking care. There's a couple of them that didn't survive the transport from Amazon to my house. Um, so there's a few dead ants and the other ants kind of like moved them out of the way. It's so fascinating. Mesmerizing, I would even say. You could sit and stare at this ant farm for hours and the preschoolers absolutely love it. So I hope that, I know, why would they step on a worm? The worm's not hurting them. I agree with you, Georgette, I agree. So anyway, that's my um, idea for you today, that if you have um, an insect unit or if you have the funds, you might wanna try an ant farm. It's a really cool, low maintenance activity for your science center. I hope you guys have an awesome afternoon. Have fun playing and learning with your kiddos, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.